I'm going to share with you the intermediate tools for Helicon Focus so you can make beautiful world-class photography that you're proud to share with the world that's in focus. If you haven't seen my last video on the basics of Helicon Focus, then check down below because you should watch that first before going beyond this video. This video is really for you guys that already understand the program, but we're gonna take you to the next level. Let's get to it. So here you'll see the images in red. Those are the ones I'm going to stack. I'm in Lightroom, but just a real quick refresher on stacking. For Helicon Focus, the best way to actually photograph is when your subject is the closest to your lens, you take that photograph first, and then you continually take a one right after another and making sure that you have at least one part of a section that is in focus on both images that you're continually shooting. If you don't understand this, please go back to my beginning basics of Helicon Focus. I explain everything. You can see that I'm rendering each one. I'm rendering with method A, B, and C, and I'll explain that in a second. But just to let you know, you should really be on manual mode. Use your shutter release or timer so you don't move your actual camera when you're focusing macro. It's really good to lock your mirror. So now let's share with you how to use several rendered stacked images as source files. A lot of the times I feel that a particular method will work well with the soft areas of my image and another method will work better with the detailed areas in my focus stack. What I like to do is actually take the rendered stacks and merge those together. And this is how you do it. All right, so click on the raw development settings. We wanna do this before we start really diving in to uh, doing some rendering here. So go to raw and DNG, that makes a raw file and also put it to pro photo that gives you the biggest gamut of color so you could really play with post. We wanna go ahead and do a right click at the bottom left you can see on one of the renders that I did in the method A and I just click save. And you'll see that we save this to the folder with all of the images that are in the source area. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure I know that this is the A render that I just did because I wanna use this source file and then click save. Once I have it saved, then I'll go ahead and click on the bottom right. It's kind of small, but you'll see right there and I'm gonna add it to the source images. Open it and you'll see at the top it has popped up and there it is. Now I can use this as a source image to stack. If you'd like to use this source image with say a particular single image then just delete your other source images because you don't need them. Remove images. I clicked them all and now I can do a new render with a source image and a single image and then I'll make a new rendered stack. And I can use this if I'd like. Now let's show you how you can use two rendered files as a stack. So let's go ahead and right click on the C2, which is method C, and I'll save that rendered stack. And let's go ahead and click the add and see I'm going to add both of these files. What I'll do is pick the rendered files that I have saved and then I could render both sources into one stacked image. So there's times where you're going to want to do this and it works beautifully. It is absolutely amazing to batch your focus stacking. These are all focus stacked images. 
that are different. Click on the first one and then I will go through and shift click and I will right click and then I will go to again export and we will go to Helicon DNG. See now over here to the left it says 72 photos. So it's going to take all these photographs and throw them all in to Helicon Focus. 72 photos is really not that much. This is good for say 100 or less photographs. So as you can see, I have all of my different images to the right. Now what we're gonna do, they're all checked and you're gonna go over here to the left and you're gonna go to File, Batch, Process. You can add a folder, add multiple folders. This is the ticket right here when you have hundreds of actual stacking. You can add images that are outside of this program or add the current sources, which over here to the right, you can see these are the source images. What I'm going to do is go to add the current sources. Okay, so now it has taken all of those images and we're going to batch it. Up here at the top, it shows you that there's 72. You could barely see it, but that's how many images we have. The method that I want, I'm going to use the depth map because I did shoot them on a tripod and I'll use the radius A and smoothing too. Now over here, you can see the format. You can change those to TIFFs and DNGs. I'm just going to leave it as a JPEG, which is a total no-no but just so we can get them done faster. Once they're done, they're gonna be put into a subfolder called Focus. You can name it anything you want. You can also add them, the stacked images to the source files that we have in the folder if you want, or you can pick a specific folder that you would like them to go into. So I'm just gonna add a new subfolder with the images that are completely stacked. Now that it's ready, I want to make sure that it's not going to stack all of the 72 as one. We need to tell Helicon that this batch process has a variety of stacked groups. And so what I'm going to do is split stack. In this area right here, it is absolutely amazing. You can split your stacks by image count, by shoot time, if you're using an electrical rail, or you can, uh, you can split the stack by exposure or by focus. So let's go ahead and go by exposure so I can show you how this works. And we're going to split the stack and we're going to render it. And we'll let that work. If I click on one of these, you can see they, they all have been saved. So what's been saved is this file to the right. And you really want to look at the image just to make sure everything's okay because it might have some problems. But look at how beautiful that is. I love focus stacking. <laughs> So you can use the source images over here to the right, or you can do the pyramid method. We will do that right now. Kind of looks good black and white. I like the way that looked. Say that this method C and B work really well, you can merge those together. Most of the time when you change these methods, it's because of maybe a soft area and a hard focused area is just not working together or you have some haloing. So here's the B. Let's look. Look over here. This has actually B has some halo. So let's look at C. And C is actually a little bit better. Now I'm just being nitpicky now but you may see something dramatic and it's so much easier just fixing it here, guys. Don't do it in Photoshop and everything. It's so much better. Now you can see that it's bringing everything in to Lightroom. So you have to wait for this also. That's another reason why if you have more than 100, I highly recommend 
you taking the time to batch in folders. Let's look at that right now. Hi, I'm Janice and I'm the founder of the Creative Mentorship Program where we help macro and landscape photographers make world-class photography. It's an amazing program. Check out the link down below. And let me show you the Essential Macro Photography Toolkit. Download my free ultimate and yes, Essential Macro Photography Toolkit to get your hands on my top macro photography creation resources to make your next image spectacular so you can create work faster without the guesswork. Okay, as you work with Helicon Remote, you can set it up to make folders of the various stacks that you're doing. So it makes your life so much easier when it comes to batching. That's what I love about Helicon Remote. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take these folders, pretend there's hundreds of stacks, right? And we're going to batch these all at one time. So I'm just gonna open up Helicon Focus and then I'm going to go to file and I'm gonna do batch process. And then what I'm going to do is add multiple folders. This is what I was talking about. It is the ticket. So I'm going to take, I believe it's, I don't remember now. I believe it's up to this. We will see it because if we get something funky, you'll know. We're going to choose these folders. And now we're, you'll know what method to use by how you shot the stack. But what's really cool, let's just say that I want to change this to, uh, to B, depth map. And then what I'm going to do is click over here and I'm going to say apply all perimeters to other stack. Okay, so then we're going to do that. So now they're all B. And then what we're going to do is I would do D and G. I'm going to actually now put in a specific folder and I'm going to click on these three dots so I can pick the folder that I want and it's actually in my movies. Let's put it in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this. Now I know that they're all gonna be DNGs and they're going to render and place, once they're rendered, they're gonna be placed into this helicon, okay? Because here it is at the bottom, it's working. I'll be back when it's done. So I did talk a little bit about Helicon Remote. So let me know down in the comments if you're interested. I will make you a video. Just let me know yes or no down below. And we've got some issues. I'll show you a little bit about that. So when you see these red exclamations on here, that's basically telling you that there's a misalignment. Oh, see? <laughs> So what happened, this is perfect. This is so funny. So definitely check your images, your single stacks before you uh, do this, because you can see that um, this was a mess. This is a total mess. So this bottom one, look over here to the left. I'm gonna click on that. And this image should not have been in the stack, because you could see my light is right here. When you see something, like the exclamation point then what you can do is uncheck it let's get rid of it and then you could just do another render if you see something funky and you can see if we go one to one it is a beautiful stack look at how cool is that i can't wait to process you can see over here they're all raw it's ready to go. I'm actually, since I've redone it, you can save up here also if you want. My batch video, I'll process this one for you guys. And I don't want to save it as a JPEG. I'm going to save it as a DNG and we will save it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends. And always remember that your thousand words does make a difference. Cheers.